Hello and welcome to another video. I hope you're doing absolutely great. Today we're going to make a Lithuanian mushroom sauce. I've seen several different recipes for similar sauces online in different groups in different uh, places. Some are American Lithuanian, some are Lithuanian Lithuanian, um, but they all have a, basically the overall um, uh, outline of the sauce uh, in common. So I've chosen a recipe here from Lemaistas, which is a Lithuanian uh, site devoted to food, and we're going to go ahead and make that today. Um, as far as I can tell, this is sort of a universal sauce that can be served with, um, you know, pork chops, breaded uh, pork cutlets, um, probably even go great on seplanai, um, and it'd probably be absolutely delicious on um, potato pancakes. So. Um, if you want some of the things I've done uh, that might be good accompaniments to this dish, I have links in the description. But uh, as a note, um, I'm not 100% sure um, all of the places where this might or might not be eaten. So um, enjoy. And So here are all the ingredients. It's actually not that complicated. I have some butter. Uh, I'm just going to use a tablespoon or two. Um, medium onion, about a tablespoon of flour, that's 8 to 10 grams, uh, about 150 grams of chanterelles. I would prefer to use a little more, like 200 grams, but, you know, um, this is what I have, so I'm going to use them. It ought to be delicious with these, but you could use any other wild mushroom, like morels, bleats, whatever you'd like. Um, but uh, for, um, you know, for best results, I think it's probably good to stick with bleeds, uh, morels, and other sorts of um, mushrooms that you find in the Baltic. Um, you can use button mushrooms, also called champignons. Um, I've done that, it's delicious. And um, then we'll add uh, a cup of milk. This is 250 milliliters, quarter of a liter, pretty close to a cup. A um, little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, some um, sour cream, um, and then I have a little bit of some fresh herbs. I have a sprig of parsley, and I have a sprig of dill. Now, I'm going to be eating this later with pork chops, but um, if I was trying to put it with, say, a zeppelin, then I would probably change the dill for whatever I was using in the zeppelin. So if I was using basil, I'd probably add a little basil. If I was using marjoram, I'd probably use a little marjoram. And you can use dried herbs in this recipe, but if you do, you're probably going to want to um, add them much earlier, um, maybe when you're sauteing the mushrooms. So that's the ingredients, basic introductory notes, and uh, this sort of sauce should be a lovely gravy for anything ranging from pork, um, potato pancakes, um, you name it. I don't know all of the places where it's eaten in Lithuania, but, um, uh, I have seen uh, suggestions of, of having them with uh, pork, uh, chicken, uh, including fried chicken, and, um, uh, and in some cases even zeppelins. So, on to the, uh, I'll be back when I have um, completed the prep. So first into the pan goes a nice slab of butter. Um, I would say one to two tablespoons, 10 to 20 grams, somewhere in that area. And uh, from here, we'll go ahead and let this melt. Once it's melted, um, I will add in the onions. So the butter is starting to boil, bubble, so I'm going to go ahead and add the onion. And from here, I'm going to just kind of slowly and occasionally stir it till the onions just start to brown a little bit. And then we will add the mushrooms. Now the mushrooms, um, any really big mushrooms, or mushrooms that are big enough to be a problem when frying, uh, I've already cut into two or three pieces. Um, so you'd want to do the same thing too. But uh, um, that's mostly because of, of how we're going to go ahead and cook the mushrooms from here. Uh, one other note, don't let the onions um, uh, brown too much because we're still going to fry things for quite a while and um, 
In most cases, they'll come up uh, a little bit chocolate colored and uh, well, I'll address that later. So here I'm just starting to see the beginning of browning. Uh, I'm going to let this uh, cook just another 30, 40 seconds. Let uh, a little bit more brown show up and then I'm going to add these chanterelles. You really don't want to let this brown too much at this stage because um, we still have a lot more frying to do and chances are these will end up looking kind of chocolate colored by the end anyway. So um, the other thing is if you washed the mushrooms you want to have hopefully had like at least an hour for them to dry right now because they're coming into the oil and um, if you have large mushrooms, you want to have um, cut them into pieces. So here, I'm going to go ahead and add the mushrooms. Some recipes, by the way, use bacon instead of butter. Uh, and that, of course, also works. Um, but this particular one that I'm making here is uh, without the bacon. Now I'm going to go ahead and cook these um, and as I do this the uh, the mushrooms will let a bit of water out and then they will dry again. Once they're kind of you know kind of nicely roasting in the pan with the onions um, then we're ready to add the flour. So we're a couple minutes in. You can see how much wetter this is already. So we're trying to uh, dry it out a bit. That makes this much easier to cook in a saucepan than in, for example, a small pot. Um, and I often turn the heat up at some point from maybe a medium to a medium high uh, so that we can get a little more heat and uh, boil off a little more of the water. So I've turned up the heat and we're just gonna let this cook, stirring it for a little while. And we'll watch this go. So you can see at this point that uh, the onions are really continuing to brown and that the mushrooms are starting to brown too. Now, uh, the mushrooms have also cooked way down they're not completely dry, but they are, uh, they're not really slimy anymore, which, I mean, chanterelles will go through a slimy phase as you cook them. Um, when I'm using button mushrooms, I like to see them really start to brown a bit before I go on to this next stage. But uh, I, think, I think this is looking good now. So um, in goes the flour. And now stirring becomes really important because, we really want to make sure that this fries in nicely. And we're going to stir this until it kind of becomes golden brown. Also, now that the um, now that it's pretty clear that it's dry enough and that the um, and that the mushrooms are not sticking too much of anything else once I added the flour, I've turned the heat back down to medium. The reason why will become evident in a little bit. And we can start to see that there is definitely a browned flour crust developing around things. So here I'm going to add the milk. Now you can use a broth or even water, but milk seems to be pretty typical for these uh, sauces. Uh, some sauces even use cream. Um, and now of course we really have to stir. As we stir, the flour is going to um, come into the milk. The milk's going to boil a bit, and this is all going to thicken up. I also need to add a number of other things here. I'm going to add my chopped herbs. I'm going to salt things. Depending on how much salt you like, what you're eating it with, this may vary. And I'm going to add pepper. And I tend to be pretty generous with the pepper. I 
Now I'm just going to let this uh, um, simmer for a little bit and I can even start to turn the heat down maybe to like a minimum medium low and I'm going to let this uh, cook for maybe two three minutes stirring uh, max might might even be more like a minute until this is looking kind of the way I want it to look and that it's a, a kind of thick and then I will stir in the sour cream and uh, we'll be ready uh, to go forward okay so that was actually like 20 seconds and this is starting to look nice and thick so I'm going to take it off the heat and um, from here I'm going to add a spoonful of sour cream and we'll stir this in and we'll let this just kind of sit for a couple of minutes to rest. So most recipes I've seen suggest about a tablespoon of sour cream. I think this is a bit more that I'm about to add, maybe one and a half, maybe two tablespoons. It's not that sensitive. Um, and then what I'll do is I will just stir it in. But you want to wait until the sauce is thickened before you start to add the sour cream. That helps avoid things like curdling. So, uh, some recipes suggest returning this to the heat briefly. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to let this uh, sit. And when I'm ready to reheat it for my dinner, I'm going to cook it with a little bit of milk to loosen it up and then serve it with uh, pork chop and potatoes. But for now, I'm going to take a small amount of this for the taste test and um, we'll go we'll go from there so this is unfortunately the best uh, sauce bowl that I have so I've taken a couple um, spoonfuls of it out uh, I've gone ahead and put it there I'm going to garnish it with a sprig of parsley and then I could for example dust it with um, with, I could, for example, dust it with a little bit of chopped parsley. But, um, I'm not going to do the dusting today, or maybe I will. I'll be right back with some parsley to dust it with. So, I have a little bit of chopped parsley here. I'm just going to sprinkle it over the top. And here we have it. Um, next will be the taste test. And now for the taste test. This is really, really rich, is how I describe it. The flavors of the mushrooms, um, because of the way I've cooked them down, really come through in a very vibrant way. And um, they blend very nicely with these chopped herbs. This is a delicious recipe, and it works with many different kinds of mushrooms. It also accompanies many different kinds of foods. It's a really versatile, really delicious sauce. I recommend that you try it. Um, thank you very much. Um, bon appetit, and see you next week.